a birth song allows the baby to have something that it recognizes in that moment of complete chaos. So I started writing for all my kids birth songs while they were still in the womb and I would play it every night. And so every night I'm sitting on my guitar, singing to the belly. And then uh, my wife would read Allie, Bella's big sister, bedtime stories while Bella's in the womb. And I'd be playing classical guitar in the background. And that's what we did every night. So Bella heard music, heard mommy's voice, heard uh, Allie's voice and was being family before she ever got out. So I recorded on CD and the moment she's born, her song is in the operating room and she has something because baby's eyesight don't, doesn't work when they're born, they're, but their ears do. They start to hear in the womb. So as children, we hear the world we enter before we see it. So it's really important to have that some semblance of uh, consistency, right? And then of course, this was undiagnosed, so she comes out and she has no skin from her knee down to her foot on her leg. It never grew in utero. She looked like the Atlas muscle guy in the when you were growing up and you saw in the anatomy classes, you just saw all the connective tissue and the muscles and the veins and you just saw it all. It was just, it just never grew. And we just sat there in the operating room and it got quiet. That's not a good sign. And uh, everything changed, right? So within minutes, we're off to the NICU, wheeling in a cart, Bella's in a box, plastic box called an isolate, and I'm wheeling her down a hallway from one hospital underground to the children's hospital next door. My wife, meanwhile, is still in surgery, now in a separate hospital. And I get to the NICU, and I'm standing there, and there's nothing I can do. I'm like, I don't have breasts, I can't feed you, I can't hold you, I'm useless. And there's nothing worse than being a new dad and feeling like you're useless. That was awful. And so I walk back to see my wife. And on the way back, I mean, I was literally holding the guardrail. And on the way back, it dawned on me, wait a minute, dude, you've got music. And so I went back to my wife's hospital room and with my MacBook and with like, a, I, I had a little iMic for my iPod at the time. And with my MacBook, I recorded right there in, in the hospital room, her reading the bedtime stories to Allie and me playing guitar. The only difference is Bella's in the NICU. And then I had her recording affirmations to Bella while I'm playing the same classical guitar music that she heard every night. And then I took my song and I put it all on one playlist put it on the iPod, went back to the NICU and put in the isolate inside with her, my iPod with that playlist playing on a little battery operated, uh, you know, uh, speaker because we couldn't touch her, but the music could. And I realized this is the only way we can touch her is with music. She has a skin disease. We can't touch her. So, and then I would, we would play that while I was missing so that she could hear us. And then when I would come back, I would play her birth song and I would play everything live to her. And uh, that's what it was like in the NICU. And then we started using the music for all of her surgical procedures. Every time she went in for surgery, I would sing to her as they went, as she went under uh, for anesthesia. So it was like that, again, that last thing she knew what was, what, what was around. And then for wound care, every day we had to change her bandages. And so music for calming her and calming us and for pain management became vital for everybody. So every single time we had a wound care session where we had to change those bandages, music was playing. And I got to tell you, it was like, it was like angels were just with her. When the music would play, she would just sit there and she would just look at us. She would listen to the music. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. You're doing such a good job. And she wouldn't like fuss or anything. And then we'd finish wound care and the music would stop. And it was like, zoomp, back to baby. <laughs> She'd start moving around. But like, it was magical when she would just be listening to the music while we were changing her. Those were some of the most sacred moments with Bella was when Angelique and I would be changing her dressings. And the two of us worked really well as a team and we would be listening to the music so it would be calming us because we'd be just putting on really sweet instrumental lullabies and just like, oh, super soft, super gentle, just like caressing all of us in the room. And we would be whispering to each other and we'd be whispering to Bella and smiling because we knew, again, she's looking to us for how she should feel right now. 
So we would be really gentle and sweet and peaceful and manage that for her. So then she'd be like, okay, this is a gentle, sweet thing. Cool. The music's good. They're having fun. I'm going to have fun. And we'd go into this sacred space together in the music. And we, that's how it went every day she was alive. And the last day she was alive, um, when her heart stopped, her birth song came on the iPod all by itself. And it was 45 minutes into the middle of a playlist. And I got to harmonize with the iPod and I got to sing her into heaven as I was taking all the tubes out of her body. And I just want you to know, before Bella was ever born, I wanted to get into hospice music therapy so that I could be the soundtrack of someone's transformation from life to afterlife. And that was cool. Just for a stranger, I had that experience clinically. It was one of the greatest gifts that I could do that for somebody else. I was so grateful. But when I got to be that soundtrack for Bella coming into life in the operating room, and then into afterlife from the hospital room as a daddy who in that other moment felt useless. I realized what daddy wouldn't give his arm to have provided that much use for his daughter, given that I couldn't control the circumstances, but I could show up like that for her. And I could use this old friend in a new way called music. Pfft, lucky guy.